today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at the tropics where we do have Tropical Storm Adelia, I think that's how you pronounce it, and then Hurricane Franklin out there, as well as another disturbance out there offshore of Africa, as you can see. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the upcoming pattern overall, as there's a lot going on as far as temperatures and storminess is concerned. Anyway, I do apologize for no upload yesterday, a very, very rare event here on this channel. We were having severe internet issues here at my house. Uh, and it just was not panning out. I could not get access to any of the information to even record. And even if I somehow could record it, the, you know, I wasn't gonna be able to upload it. So just so many issues through the entire day and I do apologize, but we are here to stay of course. As you can see, we're just gonna take a look at this disturbance here. We do have a 0% chance of development over the next 48 hours and a 20% chance of development over the next seven days. Let's go ahead and check out the cone forecast. I'm gonna up update each of these here as you can see uh, this is as the 4 p.m update we do expect this one tropical storm adelia to become a hurricane by 1 a.m uh in about 36 or so hours of so tuesday morning and it's going to remain a hurricane until about 1 a.m on wednesday where it's going to be impacting there in the corner of florida you can see there's tons of hurricane watches up for the coast of florida here all the way from Tampa Bay, even south of Tampa Bay, way north of Tampa Bay, across the Panhandle as well. We have hurricane watches up. We do have tropical storm watches there to the south here in, in the west coast of Florida and even for some of the Florida Keys. So lots and lots of impacts. There's even the chance that this one will be offshore of the Carolina coast, bringing some impacts along there as a tropical storm. So we need to watch this one ever so closely, especially for the Outer Banks here and the other coastlines along Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina there. If it is offshore, you can expect potential development to occur and maybe even some more uh, intensification with this one, which would definitely bring some uh, amplifications, of course. Now, as we take a look here at Hurricane Franklin, as you can see, this one is expected to become a major hurricane by 8 a.m. tomorrow. Remain that way until about 8 p.m. on Tuesday before coming back down to a typical hurricane, a less major one. That's going to be a Category 2 or 1 to be non-major. Major is going to be 3, 4, or 5. So we do expect this one to come back down to at least 2 by 8 a.m. on Wednesday and remain that way until about 8 a.m. on Friday. As you can see, there is a very slim shot that we do see Bermuda take a direct hit. It's on the outside of the cone, uh, but indirect impacts are very likely from this for Bermuda, so we are going to be watching for that. It's going to move northward through the Atlantic, not really impacting any land, thankfully. Now, as we take a look at the upcoming pattern, we can see that as we move through with this, this is for later on uh, today, but it's already so late, so we're just going to move straight into tomorrow. This video is going to come out a little extra late. Again, we've had some internet issues. Uh, along the eastern seaboard through the southeast and deeper south, we do have some thunderstorm activity all the way from Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, and even northward into New England. We do have some isolated and scattered about thunderstorm activity, even widespread in a few spots there. I want to point out that this is Franklin here, uh, and this is Adelia uh, right here. So that is where we're going to be seeing things by Monday the 28th here. Uh, by the time we reach Tuesday the 29th, this is what we'll be taking a look at, this hurricane right here, uh, Tropical Storm Adelia right there, uh, potentially Hurricane Adelia by that point. And we can see that even without these being on shore, we do see thunderstorm activity up and down the eastern seaboard there. Once again, mostly quiet outside of those pockets. By the time we reach Wednesday, we can see this would be bringing uh, direct impacts to that kind of corner of Florida there as a 988 millibar low pressure center. Extremely likely that that would be hurricane status at that point. And you can see the impacts would be pretty far stretching. We can see impacts as far northward as portions of Alabama and Georgia, even in the South Carolina by this point. And then pretty much the entirety of the state of Florida could not rule out isolated thunderstorms mostly associated with that hurricane at that point, assuming it does become a hurricane. And then by Thursday, this is the interpretation that's going to be the 31st, by the way. This is the interpretation of this European model. Uh, we could see lots and lots of activity happening for areas in Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina there as a result of this storm. Now, as we keep going here, 
for the day on Friday, we could see that this would be still bringing some impacts to some of the outer banks here for eastern regions of North Carolina as it's kind of sliding offshore and really weakening by this point. 1,003 millibar low pressure center after all that land interaction. No surprise there. There is some isolated and scattered about thunderstorm activity up and down the east, or better yet, the western seaboard there by Friday, September 1st. Uh, by the time we reach Saturday, September 2nd here, we can see mostly quiet from coast to coast here. No tropical activity according to this model. Sunday here on the 3rd, again, very, very quiet. I want to just keep going and flying through these quieter days. Uh, the 4th here, which will be a Monday, we do actually have a little bit going on as there is some thunderstorm activity there in the northeast along the Gulf Coast. And then here for northern California, we are seeing some isolated activity going on. Now by Tuesday, the 5th here, uh, we can see there is plenty of thunderstorms for a lot of the northeast here, some of the northern Rockies, but still, I mean, if you're looking coast to coast, this is relatively quiet for the most part. Now, as we take a look here at the total precipitation, we can see anywhere in the whites are expecting practically no precipitation. Gray is going to be about a tenth of an inch or less. Greens are a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Blues are half an inch to an inch. Your yellows are an inch to two inches. Reds are two to five inches. And then your browns are... Uh, I think I just said that, five to 10 inches. And then your blues even, which we see some of that for Southern North Carolina, mostly as a result of that tropical activity, would be 10 to 15 inches of precipitation. Hopefully that's not the case because this could cause some major flooding, of course. Uh, we're looking at above average activity for all of these areas here. For the most part, everywhere else is seeing average to below average activity. So really it's just that Eastern seaboard as a result of that tropical storm slash hurricane that would be seeing above average activity. Let's take a look here at the temperature pattern. We do have this kind of uh, midsummer Arctic blast happening. We get kind of around two here at the very end of August here for the 31st, something like this is what we're taking a look at. Now, as we keep going here, we can see that we see a warming trend in the east and a cooling trend out west. And the cooling trend out west is the main factor here. This is what we call a negative PNA that stands for Pacific North American Oscillation. And this causes warming for a lot of the central and the eastern states. So exactly like this is what we end up seeing as a result of that. Let's keep going. And I mean, we really see the same thing all the way through about September 10th, September 11th time frame here. We see warmth prevailing in this pocket here and then cooler air prevailing here. So I'm going to do negative, positive, classic negative PNA pattern all the way through about the 10th of September. So uh, even though things are a little bit cooler right now, and by that I mean lower 80s, upper 70s, nothing crazy, but for this time of year, it does feel a little bit nice. It feels like fall time. Uh, not looking like we're gonna have an uh, early fall by any means, because as you can see, I mean, September 10th, we're still taking a look at above average temperatures, which will make things continue to feel like summer basically. So we're gonna have to wait for any cooling to take place for a little while longer. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe as we do upload mostly every single day. I can't really say that with confidence after yesterday. Again, I do apologize. But be sure to click the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.